Guys, I just found something that will absolutely blow your mind. The information I'm about to hand over to you guys is gonna change the way you look at Premiere forever. Now, you probably think this is a tutorial, right? No, you're gonna learn some mind-blowing fun facts and a little bit of history about Premiere Pro. Before we start, I wanted to give away our brand new Premiere Pro beginners course, but you gotta do something to earn it. In this video, I have a question hidden somewhere randomly. Once you found it, answer it in the comments down below and the winner will be chosen randomly. All right, fun facts coming your way. When Premiere was born in 1991, it actually didn't have the name Premiere. It was called Real Time. It was a QuickTime based editor and was basically just a demo because QuickTime was still in beta. Turned out that the creator, Randy Ubilis, did a great job Job because real time was given the name Adobe Premiere after being acquired by Adobe Systems. By the way, Randy created this working demo in just 10 weeks. Fun fact. I mean, all of these are fun facts, but Randy also played a huge role in developing Final Cut, which is an editing software for the Mac, by the way. When Premiere was released, the world completely changed. It was truly revolutionary, and it played a huge role in the transition from analog to digital video editing. In the early days, video editing was done using physical film reels by actually cutting and splicing them. Then later on, you had these huge editing machines that cost more than $100,000. But when Premiere was released, you could edit video from home on an affordable Macintosh. And here we are complaining about slow playback. In the old days of Premiere, you could only edit up to 10 frames per second, which would look like this. That's insane, guys. I actually installed a fully functional Premiere 2.0 but not on this computer, I just thought it was really cool to show you guys. But I did install it on a Macintosh emulator so that it could show you guys a high quality screen recording of what it looked like back in the days. Now, before I'll show you how the old Premiere works, I wanted to tell you about the complete Cinecom bundle. Here on Premiere Basics, we're also celebrating Black Friday. And that means you can get access to all of our courses and video packs we've ever made for the rest of your life. And every time we release a new pack or new course, it will be added for free to your My Cinecom account. Now, because of Black Friday, you will get a 94% discount of the complete Cinecom bundle. You're basically stealing from us. Normally this costs $3,150, but now it's only $197. But wait, there's more. On top you will also get a year of free Audio Pro, which normally costs $200. Now besides audio, you'll also get a few other deals that will be visible in your My Cinecom account. All you need to do is use the code Black Friday at checkout and that's it. Thanks for stealing. All jokes aside, click the link below to level up your skill set. And now let's get 30 years back in time. Now, in the old Premiere, you basically had these separate windows instead of one application with different tabs. But it wasn't so different in the 90s as it is now. You can see the construction windows, which we now know as a timeline. Video and audio tracks are right here, and you can even add effects to your video. The toolbar is right here at the bottom. You probably recognize the tools because they didn't change. This right here is the project window. Strangely, you can drag and drop files into the project. You need to go all the way to File, import and then select the file you need and now you can drag and drop the file into the timeline and look at that playback. Premiere Pro 24 can learn something from that. Adding effects was basically the same as it is now. You could find the effects library in the window menu on top and there you go, all of these were applicable to your videos. Let's try transition. We can actually drag it in the timeline. So the effects works like this. You need to put them in between video track A and B if you want it to work. And there you go, we can now edit an entire Premiere Basics episode on Premiere 2. No, that is if you're happy with 240p resolution and 10 frames per second. I mean, why not? Now, moving forward to the year 2003, Adobe Premiere got rewritten from the ground up and that's when they called it Adobe Premiere Pro. Maybe if we do that again, we could fix the crashes and stuff. Now, another fun fact. Deadpool was actually edited in Premiere Pro, and so was Hail Caesar. I don't know how they did it, but they did it. Now, before Creative Cloud subscription existed, you could actually buy Premiere for one price. No need to pay every month, but the downside was no frequent updates. By the way, Adobe's future vision of Premiere is incredible. They want to add AI features, for example, finding music and sound effects and adding them to your video. The AI will understand what's inside your video, and it just knows which sound effects it needs to put under it. Now, if you want to learn more about that, click the video right here on my left. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always, stay creative.